You ever wonder how psychologists learn about the brain? Well, back in the day, they would just measure the bumps on your head and then make guesses about your personality based on that. And for some reason, I feel like they could study me pretty easily. Anyways, we don't do that anymore. Now we stick people in brain scanners. So in this video, I'm going to cover the five most commonly used brain scanning techniques. And first up, we have the EEG. The electroencephalogram is a tool that is used to measure the electrical activity of the brain. When doing an EEG, they basically put a bunch of electrodes on your scalp to detect and record the electrical signals produced by your brain's neurons. EEGs are commonly used in research and in clinical settings to study brain function and diagnose certain conditions like epilepsy or sleep disorders. And one really cool thing about the EEG is that it gives you real-time information. So researchers can actually see when a person transitions into a new stage of sleep. Or if you do it while the person's awake, you can actually train them to alter their brainwave activity. And this type of training is called biofeedback, and it can be great for people who have anxiety or ADHD. Up next, we have the CAT scan. A CAT scan, also known as a CT scan, is an imaging technique that uses x-rays and computer processing to create detailed cross-sectional images of the brain. It involves taking a series of x-ray images from different angles and then reconstructing them into a three-dimensional image. CAT scans provide detailed information about the structure of the brain, including the presence of tumors or other types of brain damage. The strength of a CAT scan is that it's really fast. So if you're scanning someone who doesn't want to sit still, you can still probably get the job done. The weakness is that CAT scans don't provide very detailed images of soft tissue. It's an x-ray. It's better for bones than for brains. Okay, up next we've got the MRI. MRI stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging. It's a non-invasive imaging technique that uses strong magnetic fields and radio waves to create detailed images of the brain. MRIs provide images with much more contrast than CT scans, so they're more useful when looking for damage to soft tissue in the brain. So MRIs are commonly used to visualize brain anatomy, identify abnormalities like tumors, and to study the progression of neurodegenerative disorders. The only real downside to the MRI is that it's slow, and you have to hold really still to get a good image. And it's also a giant magnet, so people with certain implants can't do them. Okay, and the CT scan and the MRIs, they're just spitting out still images. How do we learn about brain activity? Well, for this task, we use PET scans or fMRIs. The PET scan, aka positron emission tomography scan, uses nuclear radiation to provide information about brain activity and function. It involves injecting a small amount of radioactive tracer into the bloodstream, which emits positrons that interact with tissues in the brain. The scanner then detects these positrons and generates images that show areas of high or low activity in the brain. PET scans are awesome for studying brain function. By using them, we can study brain regions involved in specific tasks. For example, we could give a person this radioactive tracer and then show them some scary images. In the scanner, we would see the amygdala and the visual cortex light up because those parts of the brain are active when we're looking at something scary. Okay, the last one, the fMRI. The fMRI is just an MRI that can measure brain function, hence the F in front there. fMRIs measure changes in blood flow and oxygenation levels in the brain. It provides information about brain activity by detecting the blood flow response associated with neural activity. Activity. By comparing images taken during different tasks or stimuli, researchers can identify which brain regions are active during those activities. So how good are these imaging techniques? Well, unfortunately, not nearly good enough. Professor Joseph Ledoux, who is a super famous researcher on human emotion, has explained it by saying we're basically trying to learn about New York City by looking at a map of New York State. The images just aren't good enough yet, so I guess we can look forward to some interesting studies when they improve. Okay, that's it for brain scans. In our next video, we'll look at how the brain can adapt.